Welcome back, everyone. It's time for possibly the most important tier list that will ever be made. We're going through the best of the best right now. I have reached out to the community and some trusted experts in the gaming field to provide me with the greatest video game covers of all time. And I have gone through. I've, I've acquired these, and I've got them in a folder here. And some of these I haven't seen before, but we're going to go through and, in my expert opinion, determine the greatest video game covers of all time and where they would rank amongst each other in their own tiers. So every cover in here uh, should be great and should be the best, but we're determining the best of the best. So without further ado, let's go, because we got a lot of covers to get through. All right, our first cover here, Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. I quite like this cover, and I had this game back in the day, and I believe the cover was actually holographic, which really uh, gave it this like nice ethereal and uh, premium quality. Uh, I've always liked this cover quite a bit. I think uh, what kind of holds it back for me slightly, the Samus HUD that's been overlaid on the image, I, I don't really get why that's there. It's kind of weird, because it would imply we're looking at this from Samus's perspective, but we're looking at Samus, so I, I don't really like that. I wish they had maybe removed some of those elements. Besides that, you could say maybe the artwork of the uh, Luminoth and the Ing, the two aliens in the back, is kind of plain, but I do think this cover is pretty cool, and it encapsulates the game quite well in some ways, so I'm going to put this in the A tier. Next, oh boy, it's Resident Evil 6. Uh, yeah, this cover is probably one of my least favorite covers uh, if we're talking about Resident Evil games. Um, and I say that purely because it's just, it's just not creative. Uh, it's just a 6. Uh, to be fair, the 6 is supposed to look like some kind of virus, but in my humble opinion, uh, it just looks weird. It doesn't even really fit with the game. There's so much going on in this game, they really could have tried to, to put something more on the cover. And of course, the worst part is that someone observed that this cover looks like a, an upright giraffe, and he's doing something with the person who is bent over, and ever since someone uh, made that comparison, it's all I see. So this, this is a, a tainted cover, still one of the best covers of all time, but we're putting it uh, in the D tier. Oh, it's Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah, this is the original cover. I feel like they've gone through a lot of covers because they keep reissuing the game. Uh, but this is a classic cover, very simple, uh, but I like it. It feels very Tom Clancy to me uh, in its simplicity, but also just trying to express what uh, is this game, what is the kind of action in this game about, that sort of hot breaching. I always like this cover. Uh, nothing revolutionary. But I enjoy covers like this, so I'm, I'm going to put this one in A tier. A tier cover. Ah, Mad World. Game with a, a distinctive art style that I think this cover mostly captures without having to resort to more violence, uh, you could say. But it, it is a nice, simple cover, but that uh, it really captures the look of the game, where it has this black and white aesthetic, but also this this almost like calligraphy thing going on in a weird way. Um, I will put this cat. Uh, I'm gonna put this in B. I like this cover, but there are lots of covers like this to be fair. So I will just put it in B. Okami. This cover is much like the last cover in a lot of ways. There's a similarity in the art style uh, if you squint hard enough. And I think this cover is pretty great. Uh, big fan of the IGN logo that you can see if you look very closely on this cover. That really makes it. And I've always preferred the Wii version, purely because I think they put more effort into the cover design. So, we're putting this in S tier, because this is how you do a game cover. Nobody does game covers like Capcom. Nobody pays more attention than Capcom. And we have to respect that. Future graphic designers learn from this cover. Wow, beautiful jet. We're really on a run here with uh, Clover and Platinum. I, I'm not really sure why this is the order they're in, but yeah. Uh, I always like the Beautiful Joe cover. It's just got a lot of craziness. Uh, captures the art of the game quite well. 
I think the weirdest thing about this cover, looking at it now, it seems like every single character on this cover has their mouth open. Uh, I mean, I guess the robots don't really have mouths, but it, everyone is making that that face that uh, characters on the cover of games should have. And I think that adds to it. I think they could have maybe put some other characters from the game on here besides just like some of the bosses, but uh, still a pretty solid cover. And I always like that logo. So I'm going to put this in A tier. Ah, Resident Evil 1. One of the strangest covers that I uh, have ever seen. I don't know who this guy on the cover is, the, the, the expression he's making on his face. Um, this cover, it just makes me sick. It gives me anxiety. And I think the game itself is very good at doing that. But I wish they had put a little bit more effort into it because it's just difficult to look at. And if you didn't have the Resident Evil logo on it, I would think this is some forgotten, like, top-down uh, shooter game where you just shoot spiders. And that's not exactly what Resident Evil is, so I, I think we're going to have to put this in the C tier. Devil May Cry. You know, the thing about the Devil May Cry cover is, honestly, I don't really find it that exciting because... Dante's just kind of sitting there. He's not doing much. He doesn't look that cool on the cover. And it's a weird, like, th it's his 3D model on this uh, sword. And the sword kind of looks like it's on a different layer, like a layer of existence. I just I just don't think the things on this cover go together too well. And I wish, I wish the cover had more of an action feel, like some of the previous covers that we just saw. Uh, so not, not really one of my favorite covers, personally. I, I'm going to put this in, in B tier. It's, it's adequate, but I don't think it really captures Devil May Cry's essence very well. Kirby Air Ride. What a game. This, uh, this cover really told you you were in for something different, because when Kirby is frowning, you know you're in deep shit, all right? When was the last time you saw Kirby do this? And, you know, to be fair, this was an ad adjustment made for America. Uh, I think that's their time-honored tradition. They really want you to know that Kirby is, is serious. He's a serious character. Uh, so in America, they give him the frowny eyes on several of the game covers. And I think this is an example where the frowny eyes work, because... Kirby, it makes more sense for him to be this angry when he's driving fast rather than fighting some kind of giant godly being. You know, he can take that easy. But racing against your friends or whatever, we all know that's where you really have to focus. So, a simple cover, but it shows you a different side of Kirby. So, I'm going to put this in the, the B tier, personally. Deadpool, the video game. Uh, I love the quote. I always love when covers have quotes on them. It's my favorite thing about cover design. So it was very nice of Deadpool to ensure that the quote was as accurate as possible. Um, other than that, we have this 3D model of Deadpool. It kind of looks, it does, it kind of looks cheap. There's money burning, which is always nice. I, I like when they're honest about their waste. And honestly, I'm not a huge fan of how small Wolverine is on this cover. I mean, he's he's more popular than some of the other characters on, on this cover. It is weird that he seems to be the smallest one here. Uh, he has this, like, side profile. I don't know. Uh, I would have had to be a little bigger, personally. Uh, but I think this is an okay cover. I'm going to put this in B tier. Shrek Super Slam. You know, what makes this cover special is how these, these, uh, the character models, they, they basically look like the movie. You know, they didn't skimp out here. This really makes you feel like you're in Shrek as a film. And that's really what you want when you buy a licensed video game. You want to feel like you're in the movie. Granted, the problem is there's really only two people fighting on this cover. Like, Donkey is just sitting there and Puss in Boots is doing something. Um, they should have tried to have them fighting or, or something else because it doesn't really capture what this game is all about. But still, great uh, effort on this cover, so I will put it in the A tier. Oh, this is... Um, I, I don't actually think I've seen this before. This is the uh, Japanese F-Zero X cover. You know, this is actually, I'm not gonna lie, this is a pretty badass cover. N64 covers really ran the, uh, the Spectrum. But I think this one, it has this cool look that 
you, f you feel when you're playing F-Zero, because F-Zero is uh, very fast. It looks like the entire cover is moving at light speed, and you have these bizarre, cool-looking characters that you want to know more about, but you really never will. I don't really get what's going on with Captain Falcon there. Why does he have, like, a, his face is fracturing? Like he's sans or something? <laughs> I uh, don't know why that's happening, but otherwise, a, a pretty good-ass cover. So I, I, I'll put this in the A tier. That's where I think this belongs. A tier cover. Lovely artwork. Alright. Dead Space Extraction. Um, I gotta zoom in on this. This image is really tiny. Okay, I think the problem with this cover, aside from how blurry this, this JPEG is... Um, you know, it's hard to see. The shading on this, it's all it's too dark. If you're doing a horror cover, you need to have some degree of darkness, but, like, the shading is on the people I think you're supposed to see, and it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. I don't know who this character is. If it didn't have that gun on it, I wouldn't think it was Dead Space. So, I, I don't know. This could have been a lot better. I would have wanted to... Especially since this is, like, a Dead Space spinoff. I would have really wanted to see some cool creatures on the cover uh, as well. But I, I kind of get what they're going for, but still, it's just not great. I, I think we'll put this in C tier. It could definitely look worse. Uh, what's next? Oh, oh, that's what's next. You know, uh, you know, this is a controversial title with a controversial cover. Um, but honestly, to me, this cover... It does what covers should do. It perfectly encapsulates the game. We have Shadow the Hedgehog. He's holding some kind of gun. There's an explosion behind him. There's like some kind of weird, what is that, like a dithering or like a hatching effect in the background to, to let you know this thing is serious. I don't know, man. I love this cover. I, I think this cover uh, really shines compared to other Sonic covers. It's much, I, I would rather look at this cover than play the game, which is something I could say about several Sonic games, to be honest. But how can you hate this? I'm putting this in the S tier. Exactly where it should be. What do we have next? Uh, <laughs> uh what? Uh, I, um, you know, I call myself a game expert, but I can't say I'm terribly familiar with this title, uh, Phalanx, the hyperspeed shootout in space. And there's a guy with a banjo and what may be a spaceship taking up a very small percentage of the cover and then it looks like uh what is that next to him you can't even tell is that somebody's shoulder is that like a couch what i i have no choice but to put this in the d tier because i i i'm speechless uh this is not one of my personal favorite covers of all time uh next up we have Bomberman for the game boy presumably here's Bomberman. he is wearing an indiana jones outfit I love that sticker that says new releases, or yeah, new release, it's like a holographic sticker. It's just on the cover, uh, artful. I don't really know what the Indiana Jones thing is for. That That's kind of weird, because um, it just says Bomberman Game Boy, so why do we have that going on? Uh, but you know what my favorite aspect of this cover is? Uh, is that two Bombermans, um, I guess his right, there's another Bomberman, and he's holding a gun, Directly above the E for everyone, which I think is great. It's like he was threatening the SRB. You have to give this an E. Uh, I don't know. I'm not a big Bomberman lore guy, so I don't know why there's there's two Bomberman Bombermans on the cover. Because the black one, in, who you could barely see because the logos are over him, that's a different character, I think. Uh, but there appear to be two of regular Bomberman on this cover, and that's bothering me. Um... Uh, quite a bit. But I, I think otherwise, this is a good cover. I'm going to put this in the B tier. Alright, what's next? Oh, man. I have not seen this cover in a very long time. I I remember seeing this in, in, in a magazine. I remember seeing this cover, or like this artwork in a magazine. I don't know if it was Nintendo Power or something. But yeah, we have a Midway sports game with a... Uh, I, oh my god, yeah, Freestyle Metal X, I guess it's like a bike game, like a BMX game, right? I don't know who this guy is, but him coming out of his eye uh, repeatedly is creepy and gross, and I don't 
much care for it. Uh, I mean, it's a nice drawing of some guy, but I, do, I don't enjoy this as a cover uh, at all. Um, but I will give them some credit for the way the art looks, so I will put it in the C tier, because this is better than that Banjo one. We have... <laughs> We have, we have Jesus. Wow. I mean, this is really low res art. Enix? Jesus? I want to know more about Jesus now. Is, is that character on the cover Jesus? Who is Jesus? Is Jesus a person in this game? Um, I'd like this art uh, quite a bit, to be honest. I want to look into whatever this game is. Uh, but I, I like the way this looks. I don't know if this is accurate to the game, but I give them props for this artwork, and maybe Square Enix can bring Jesus back in some form. I mean, I mean, wouldn't that be fitting for Jesus to return, uh, especially through the auspices of Square Enix? Uh, I'm gonna put this in A. This is a solid, solid cover. Next, oh, of course, we have Mega Man, the original Mega Man cover. Uh, yeah, I mean, I never much liked these covers where, like, the cover art is really small and there's all this this big border like, around, uh, but that's just how it was. I'm sure someone has investigated why the cover looks like this, and if you look very closely, it looks like you can see someone's signature, so, so maybe someone has figured out who the artist is and asked them. But Mega Man, um, well, he does shoot at things, and uh, he does... What are these yellow things? What are those supposed to be? Are those platforms? The perspective on this is really not good. It's it's dizzying. This is a dizzying cover in more way. And honestly, in some ways, Mega Man's appearance is kind of the least bad thing. Although when you, the more I look at him and his shoulders and stuff, it's truly, unfortunately, an anatomically terrible cover. And the actual like shading and the, the rendering of everything is not not great either. Uh, whoever did this tried, uh, but that's all I gotta say. So I am gonna I'm gonna put this in D tier. This is D tier. We're doing it. Next up, body count. Is this a real game? Like I've never seen this cover. I have this vague feeling this game is not. This isn't real. Um, or it was just so generic that that it's been completely forgotten by history. I don't know, I mean, this cover, on one hand, was probably pretty easy to make because they just had to take these JPEGs of, like, guns and, and just kind of put them on here. So I don't feel like this cover was that difficult to make. Then you have to do the effects, obviously. And the lighting effects, I kind of like this weird rainbow thing they have going for it, but it doesn't really give me a sense of what this game is or what is special about this game. This is definitely an instance where I'd rather have the game cover where you have, like, the Call of Duty guy walking towards the cover. That conveys more than this. This is a game where somebody has guns. So yeah, not, I don't like this cover at all, really. Uh, I am going to, uh, I'm gonna put this in D tier. I, I just don't really enjoy this. Uh, next up, we have Eco, or Ico, or however you say. Eco was the stuff from uh, Jack and Daxter, right? I don't know. Um, either way, we've got the PlayStation 2 uh, Eco. This is not the American cover. The American cover is much better and would immediately be an S tier if it was uh, included, so maybe we'll see that later on. Uh, this cover, while it is very stylized in a way that is pleasant, I don't really... It, it's, it's just a little too minimalist for me. Uh, you know, it just doesn't quite evoke that same level of detail you have in the North American cover, so I think it's, a, it's, it's an okay cover. But the characters are very small, it's a little hard to tell what's going on. But they tried, so uh, I'll, I will put this in B tier. This is a B tier cover. Oh, we have Doom. Doom cover is legendary. This is a legendary cover uh, for multiple reasons. I think, I think this cover has, has, first of all, this cover has aged really well. I think it still holds up, it still evokes what Doom is as a franchise. And it, it's just fun to see all these these dumb demons. Uh, we got you know it looks nice. This is a very this is a well put together piece of artwork, and I appreciate it quite a bit. So I will put this in S tier. I think this is uh, exactly what you want from a cover. So I will honor that with an S tier. Half Life. You know I honestly I'm not a huge fan of this cover. It makes me feel like I have to clean my house. Uh, it's just very dirty looking. 
Um, and I just feel like there could have been so much more uh, on this cover. Like, we just had the Doom cover. Half-Life cover is very simple. And I, I think it's better than some other covers I've seen, but I don't really like covers that are just the logo and not really much else. So I'm putting this in C tier, honestly. This is not really one of my favorite covers of all time. Oh, speaking of, we have Mortal Kombat. A similar proposition with this cover, Mortal Kombat, uh, it's really just the logo. It's not anything else. And I think that is kind of what holds it back a little bit. Maybe they had some kind of issues with, like, the violence, and that's why the cover was so simple. Uh, but I think this logo is better than the Half-Life one. The Half-Life one is just a letter. I mean, it's, it's like a Greek letter or whatever, but this at least is something. Uh, I'll, I'll give it a B. It's, it's okay, but it's, it's not my favorite trend. Katamari Damashi. Yeah, this cover is great. Because this is a cover you look at and you go, what the hell is this? What am I looking at? Why is there a cow? There's two cows. And they seem totally fine with what is happening on the screen right now. You know, we don't even have the main character on the screen or uh, anything like that. So that, that I think, is kind of a missed opportunity. But otherwise, this is a lovely cover. So I will put this cover in A tier. It's, it's quite nice. Super Smash Brothers, the uh, 64 cover, uh, um, North American cover. I, I don't really know uh, any others personally. Yeah, I don't. I I'm not. I've not really been a huge fan of this cover, and I'm not a huge fan of the way the Nintendo characters appear on it. Uh, I'm just never really in huge on this, and it just feels like it's difficult to tell what's happening on this cover uh, because of the weird perspective, and then you know you, they're they're sort of fighting, but not too much. You know, like. What is Fox doing that caused Samus to get launched, to get biffed? And then you just have Link uh, and Kirby over there doing nothing. They don't even look like they know where they are. I Yeah, I'm not huge on this artwork. Smash covers, you know, I don't think... I, I think it took a little while, while for them to figure out what makes, like, a really fun cover. Uh, but this is probably not my favorite. I'm going to put this in C tier. Next we have Grand Theft Auto Vice City. A cover that I think uh, I've I've enjoyed the Rockstar covers. I think of their covers, this is probably my favorite. I like these these kind of collages that just sort of show, they sort of show you the aesthetic of the game, rather than like specific scenes that may actually happen. And I've I've liked this sort of style, and I like how how it's set up because you do have covers where they try to combine everything into one large image, and I think that can look ugly. I like how they're these segmented uh, frames. And I think they've they pretty much own the style. I think if other people did this, it would look like a ripoff. So, as much as I like it, I'm not sure who else could really get away with it. But I like this cover quite a bit. Um, I will put this in the A tier. Okay, yeah, Metal Gear Solid. Um, you know, uh, you miss the shots you don't take. And um, there's no cover. This is not a cover. This is the title uh, slash logo. Uh, I don't consider this a real cover so um we don't have a, a disqualified category here but i have to put this in d tier because there's this is not a cover in my opinion you have to try a little harder half-life there is other stuff on the cover mortal Kombat. there's a logo in addition to the title uh that i don't understand why anybody would do this who's responsible for this uh j what's next okay see much better we have the Metal Gear Solid 2 cover, uh, at least, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure this was the uh, PS2 original cover. I think they didn't say Hideo Kojima game on it originally, but I think when they reissued it, they put that there. But this is a, yeah, I've always liked this cover, um, and I've always generally liked Yoji's artwork. Yoji Shinkawa is, is possibly my favorite character artist, character designer, and I really, I love his art style and the way that he applied it to these games in particular, and to the cover art, which unfortunately, uh, was, you know, his cover art, it, it doesn't really, uh, it kind of stopped looking like this, I think, after this game. So, uh, it makes it stand out. I kind of prefer the reissue with Raiden as well. I, I like that artwork a little more, but this is a classic cover, in my opinion. Uh, I will personally put this in the S tier. This is one of my favorite covers. Next up... Oh, you know, this is one of my favorite games of all time, but I'm going to be honest, I don't really like this cover because there isn't that much going on on the cover. And it kind of just looks like... This looks like a Pokemon card. 
a lot of Pokemon cards would have like a 3D model of something, and then they would have this this whoa, all these these colors in the background, this blur, and that's kind of what this looks like. It's it's not quite a cover. It just feels like there needed to be more. And I like a lot of the artwork that they did for this game um, when they would draw the characters, and I wish they could have included some of that on the cover. It would have been nice to see. Like you could have had some of the link, the different links on the cover or something. Um, the moon isn't even on the cover, you know. I wish they could have done more, but N64 covers were all over the place, so I'm gonna put this in, um, I'll put it in B tier. It could be worse, but it's, it's disappointing. And next we have another Zelda cover, uh, The Wind Waker. Uh, you know, honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this cover either. Well, I think the logo is a bit better, or at least there's a little more going on. I personally don't like how faded Link is. It's, it's difficult to see. I cannot remember that this might this one it might have been one of those covers where it was kind of gold and had a little bit of a reflective quality to it. So it may have looked better in person. But when you think of the Wind Waker, you think of a game that is very colorful, and this uh, cover does not portray that. Uh, I I think that the uh, what was it the HD edition cover I think did a better job at, at portraying that. So yeah, I don't know. I don't really love this cover either. That's so weird, dude. Some of these Zelda covers I'm not a huge fan of. I will put this in C tier. And another Zelda. Wow, they're all in a row here. We have Twilight Princess. Okay, I do like this cover. This is a good cover. There's a more going on. The logo it is more interesting, but also there is more going on on this cover. I like the artwork, especially I like the way the wolf, the face, the facial expression on the wolf I really like. The one thing that's kind of weird is we have the Hylian crest in the center, and I feel like that's just there to hide some something, <laughs> something on another layer. Um, that could have maybe been tweaked out, but otherwise, I think this cover is pretty cool. So I will, I will put this in A. Metal Gear Solid for the Game Boy. See, this is a cover. The Game Boy version has cover art. You know, why why couldn't we do that on the P the PS One Jewel case? And, and again, it's I love I love this kind of artwork. I mean, this looks like Yaji Shikawa. I don't actually know if that was him, but it looks like something he would draw, and it looks real cool. Uh, so yeah, Game Boy Color. Who would have thought? They, they, they got that stuff figured out. We'll put this in B tier. Silent Hill. Uh, Silent Hill 2, of course. Um, you know, I've always thought this cover, well, it is not bad, and it does certainly feel like a cover for Silent Hill. It's always a little weird to me because the actual artwork itself, this is from, uh, that's Angela, right? I never really understood why she was on the cover. I think they, they should have put, you know, James. Uh, I think that they just had, you know, this is from a CG cutscene in the game. So I think they just took a still or of it or assets and, and used it. So unfortunately, I, I don't think the choice of character was great. Uh, assuming I'm correct on who this is, because honestly, it's kind of hard to tell. There's some weirdness with the lighting where her face kind of... I can't tell what's supposed to be behind her face, honestly. Is that a knife? Is that someone holding a knife? I can't tell. Um, it's a weird cover, but it's not totally inaccurate to uh, the games. And I've seen the Japanese cover, and I, I don't personally think that's, like, better, uh, honestly. Um, uh, but I will... Uh, I'll put this in the B tier. How about that? Borderlands 3 with um, Japanese text on it. I, I'm pretty sure this is the Western cover, so th we'll leave the Japanese text there. But yeah, you know, I'm like not the biggest fan of, the, of Borderlands in general, and I think the covers for the previous games, while well, they were not amazing, they were much better than this. This cover to me just looks absolutely hideous. It's so overly saturated and gross and like just has all these weird details that are difficult to notice like all of the uh these roses all have people's heads in them which is like something from a horror movie i didn't notice that until i was literally just now looking at this cover and i have seen this cover before i've seen it on the street on uh, posters or whatever and i did not know people's heads were in it until i was taking a closer look at it and that's creepy that's weird i don't know why they did that i don't know it just feels like there's way too much going on in this cover. And um, and I don't really get the joke. I don't get why, why does he look like a, a Buddha, like a, mess, a, messiah, a messiah 
figure, if you will. Uh, just seems kind of unnecessary. And at the very top, there's a little spaceship, and it's very tiny. You don't get it. Not funny. Didn't laugh. Uh, we're putting this in the... I'm going to put this in C tier because it could definitely have looked worse. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, this is a really... This is a, a low-res or a blurry image, but we have the Bureau XCOM Declassified, which uh, I did a, a video review on uh, back in the day. Uh, you know, this is kind of an interesting case because the cover for this game... So they had a, a clear cover over the case that you had to slide off to open it. And this is what it looked like with that clear cover on, because it had these Sharpie smudges on it. And when you remove it, um, you can see that there's basically like aliens or alien technology that is being covered on all the points uh, where it is like censored or redacted. I don't think that the actual image of the cover itself is, a, is an amazing cover, but they get a lot of points for the creativity with this effect. Uh, so because of that, I will, I will give it a B tier ranking. Dragon Age Origins. I always liked this cover. This is a nice cover. Dragon, it's like made out of blood, and then it's it's turning into this artwork. I like this cover, but my criticism of it for the most part is that it doesn't really represent the game because the cover really makes you think you're you're in for something much darker. Uh, I'm not gonna say like berserk. But, like, it makes you, it does make you think you're in for a much more gritty and dark fantasy experience um, than you actually... I mean, Dragon Age Origins does have its, its grittiness or its darkness compared to other things out there. But uh, nothing that, that looks like this image. Like, this image is almost, like, apocalyptic in a way. So, it might not be the most honest cover, but it isn't dishonest. The, the only thing on this cover that's dishonest is Morgan's hood being up, because that's not possible in the gameplay. <laughs> uh, but, you know, besides that, it, it, it's fine. So we'll, we'll, we'll put it at B, even though I personally like this cover quite a bit. Ooh, XCOM 2. This is another cover that I think is cool. Uh, you got the gray alien, but it's made of all the, the human skulls. It's a pretty grim image, but, um, you know, I, I, you could make the case that this image does not really show the, the full spectrum of, of the kind of stuff you'll see in XCOM. But sometimes your cover art just needs to be something cool. And uh, this is definitely a case where, for me, it works. So I'll, I'll put this in the A tier. I like this cover quite a bit. Oh, wow. Batman. Arkham City Game of the Year Edition. You know, there are times when I look at covers and I think, I don't have time for this. It's just an image. But thanks to covers like this, I can read the cover. Instead of having to look at any of the artwork, I can simply look at the top of the cover and go clockwise and read everything I need to know. We know it's the Game of the Year edition. It got a 10 out of 10 from Game Informer. We have the logo at about the 2 o'clock position for whatever reason. That's the logo right there. We have the list of the bonus content, uh, which... Uh, and you can get, I, what is that, a movie? Batman Year One. <laughs> well, uh, that's expired a long time ago. Thank God they put it on the cover so I would know that the offer has expired. Uh, if the 10 out of 10 wasn't enough, we've got even more. Uh, we've got infinite logos, 3D compatible. I mean, I can't fault them because if you get a lot of people saying it's one of the best games ever or game of the year, um, you know, you want to use those, uh, those quotes. But I don't know. This is a very extreme way to do a cover. And so we have to honor that with an S tier. This is going in the S tier. It's a phenomenal cover. Spec Ops The Line, you know, this is a good... This is the opposite of the body count cover, because you are making a military fiction shooter, uh, but you don't want to just do the guy in the center. Uh, so this is an attempt to kind of combine, you know, you have uh, a little more going on here, but also I love the sand theme. The, like, the image itself is falling apart into sand. Um, this is a nice cover. It's an intriguing cover. And uh, one of the reasons that when I saw this game, I was like, you know, there, there might be something to this. I had a feeling just from this cover that this wasn't going to be, you know, your average shooter game. Uh, so I enjoy this cover quite a bit. I will put it in the A tier. <laughs> Um, I, uh, I don't, who sent this? I don't know what this is. 
Trapped, uh, that's a band. Um, that, I... I don't... If anyone knows what I'm looking at, please tell me in the comments. I would love to know what this is. Uh, I will put this in D tier, just because this is a terrible cover, and I don't even think it's a real cover. It has to go somewhere, because, you know, we can't back out now. Oh, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. You know, I do like this cover. Uh, we, you know, they've got all the characters on the screen. They've even managed to fit the Chow. Uh, I don't like Tails on this cover. He's just kind of like walking forward. That, that artwork isn't great because the rest of it, it kind of evokes this like versus theme, uh, which is accurate to the game. Uh, but Tails just looks like he's in a hurry to go to the bathroom or something. Uh, but I do like this cover. This is probably one of my favorite Sonic game covers. So I'm uh, I'm gonna put this uh, in A tier. I do like this cover quite a bit. Um, this cover uh, is a great cover. Uh, Mystery of the Druids. Check it out, everybody. Uh, I think it's on GOG or something. Um, uh, S-tier cover. And I think the less I say about this game, the better. Check it out, everybody. Oh, uh, Last Guardian. Yeah, I'm not... I don't hate this cover. I've, I've always thought this cover was kind of weird. Because, first of all, we have the font. I don't like that font. And then we have... The, there's this weird black border around the, the image itself, but the uh, two characters and the terrain they are standing on is is on the foreground. It's in front of the image behind the border. And it, this is just kind of like breaking all the rules, uh, but I just don't get it. It, it confuses me. I'm, I don't love this cover. I just think it has... It's not... Compared to the Eco cover we looked at, I, I'm not really into this. And Shadow of Colossus is a much better cover, too. I'm going to put this in C tier. How, how about that? Oh, boy. C Cyberpunk 2077. You know, this cover is pretty lame, in my opinion. I don't think it looks great. I don't necessarily have a problem with trying to have the cover be, you know, mostly of the main character. Uh, but to me, this cover just looks a lot worse than the Witcher 3 cover, even though it's kind of trying to do the same thing. Uh, but really what I hate about this cover is the piss yellow color of the image behind him. And it's much worse in person if you have this cover. Uh, piss yellow is just really not pleasing as a background image. Um, and they really should have gone. I get, I get that they wanted to do something that wasn't so, like, neon or overplayed with cyberpunk. But there's a reason that you don't see this shade of yellow used that often. Like, even Spongebob doesn't look like this. Uh, so yeah, I don't like this cover one bit, and I wish they changed it. Uh, or changed the background, because the yellow, I just think, is, is lame. Uh, so we're putting this in C tier. Mega Man Legends 2. You know, there's a lot of covers, especially back in the day, where they had these uh, 3D models, and they just used them for the cover because they didn't want to do an illustration, or they thought it would look um, it would look more high-tech. This is a cover where they should have done anything else. You know, this is not a good look. Uh, his expression, the shading on it, is just weak. And uh, honestly, the, the, the piss coloration to the background kind of looks like the Cyberpunk cover, but not as extreme. This is a better color. It's easier to look at. But still, this cover, going in the C tier, I, I don't really like it. Bioshock Infinite. Man, uh, I don't remember there being this many like effects on the cover with all these the like the the, the sparks or whatever. Uh, a lot of people complained about this cover when it was first revealed um, because it looks like a cover for a first-person shooter. Uh, Bioshock Infinite is a first-person shooter, so I don't really I don't really get that complaint. Uh, I guess it just doesn't look like a thinking man's video game. Um, which is also what people want this game to be. Uh, I, I don't know. It's a mediocre cover for a mediocre game, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, but, you know, joking aside, it's okay, but really the problem uh, I find is the logo itself is too big. It kind of, you know, you, I guess you have the American flag, but then there's this weird negative space where there isn't anything 
on the left side, and they could have moved the Zeppelin down to have it be there. That would have made uh, more sense. Um, you know, really doesn't take advantage of any of the Columbia like art design that I would argue is really the strong point of the game. Uh, so not not a great cover, but not a terrible cover. Um, so I I think I will put this in the B tier. Uh, in my opinion, the Bioshock uh, one cover is not is not much better. It's it's basically the same thing. It's just it, they show a big enemy from the game instead of the main character. But I'll, I'll put this in B tier because it's it's a completely competent cover. Lost Judgment, okay, you know, I have this game, and like, goddamn, the artwork creeps me out, because it looks like Yagami is sneaking up on me. This is the same artwork that they use on the, the menu for the PlayStation, so when you, you're on your homepage, you can see him. It's like he's tearing his way through the menu to tell you, hey, you have to play my game now. It scares me. Yeah, the detailed fingers, kind of creepy. Uh, not huge on these uh, images, they just look like traced images of the 3D models of the characters. So I, I definitely prefer the first Judgment cover to this one because it's just weird looking. So I, I I will put this in C tier, how about that? The Bouncer. Man, Sora, he, uh, he had a glow up, didn't he? Yeah, this cover is extremely 2000s and uh, kind of gross looking. And really the thing to me that's the weirdest about it is the uh, very tiny text above the logo for the Bouncer. And I don't much like that, so I will be putting this in C tier because it's kind of a mess. But, uh, you know, there's people who love this game out there, and, and more, more power to them. Front Mission 4. I don't remember if I talked about this, but, like, I would never have bought this game uh, if it wasn't for the cover. I saw the cover, I would pass by this game and see the cover and be like, I, what is this? You know, I have to play this. It is a weird cover. I don't get why they're, like, asleep uh, and possibly naked. Like, that is strange to me, and I, I don't think it was necessary. <laughs> um, uh, you know, the, I guess it could be worse. It's kind of an awkward cover, but I think it's intriguing. I, I guess I will put it in C tier, though. Super Mario 2 Bros. The thing about Mario is that he needs to look like a relatable man, and nothing is more relatable than a man holding what may or may not be a turnip. If that's a turnip, that's like a sick and rotting turnip. Uh, so I don't know why it looks that way, but Mario jumping holding a vegetable without additional context, it just doesn't look intimidating or cool or fun. So I, I don't much like this image of him. And also it looks like his leg is coming out. Um, it looks like his leg is something else. That's, that's all I'll say. Uh, he should get that checked out. So I'm putting this in the C tier. Oh, it's near. You know, I think this cover is kind of inadvertently hilarious because they really tried to make the protagonist look like a badass. He looks extremely ripped, and that's kind of funny in the context of this game, but I do actually like this cover quite a bit. I think this is a cool looking cover, and it's one of those covers that you see at the store and you're like, what the hell is this? I think the back cover for this game is exceptionally terrible. We're not judging back covers today, we're judging front covers, so I'm gonna give this an A. Oh, last of... You know, this cover... This is one of those covers that you, you can't, like, have lying around the house. Because when you walk by and you see a face that looks this angry at you, it makes you feel bad. You look back and you're like, what did I do? Honestly, yeah, I don't like covers where the, the face is so big and the face is angry. Because it makes me it makes me feel weird. It's like, look, sorry, lady, I didn't mean to. Yeah, I'm not a fan of covers like this. It's kind of creepy. I just think there's so much more. The first Last of Us cover is pretty good, and this is just kind of lame by comparison. So I don't know. Maybe if they do a reissue of this game, they'll have a much better cover. But yeah, I'm not I'm not partial on this one. I'm gonna put it in the C tier. Ooh, it's uh, Shin Megami Tensei, Devil Summoner, Raido Kuzunoha versus the Soulless Army. Wow, that is some cover art, and that title is really a mouthful. There is way too much going on on this cover for me to even process with my small uh, brain. Is that That's Rasputin, isn't it? That guy on the right there. Um, I guess this cover art itself looks kind of nice. The, uh, it's not bad. But, like, what am I looking at? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna put it in B, because I think this cover art, it looks nicer than some other games, for sure. There's more going on. 
Uh, so yeah, why not? We'll, we'll put it in B tier. Oh man, Donkey Kong Country. A classic game. One of my first games uh, that, that I probably ever owned or played. Uh, 3D Adventure in the Kingdom of Kong. You know, it's not a 3D game, but back then uh, it was basically 3D because of the, the high-tech models. And I have to say, you know, like, covers like this were ushering in the future for games. And I think this is also why we have a lot of covers that look bad, because they have 3D models on them. Because, yeah, you know, I think for the most part this looks good. Um, Donkey Kong's hand looks weird, but I think that... Uh, this artwork, it was uh, it was pretty good for the time, but now everyone's trying to do this, or everyone was trying to do this for some time. But otherwise, it is definitely a cover that lets you know you're in for a totally different experience than what Donkey Kong used to be. And I, I do like it quite a bit. So I, I will put this in, I, th I think, the B tier, just because some aspects of it don't hold up. Oh man, I love Blade Runner. <laughs> uh, yeah, this cover looks like it's from the 80s or something. Wow. You know, I, w I think there's some more stuff they could have done to this to make it look a little nicer. Uh, but I can't think of what else uh, the cover for Snatcher should look like given what Snatcher is. I think we'll go with a B tier. Deus Ex. You know, this is a great cover, but I've never been huge on the actual look of the letters, the Deus Ex uh, font made out of weird metal stuff, and then that logo above it, which is supposed to be... Is that like a D and an X, or like a D and an E, or... I don't even remember. I'm not a huge on those elements, but otherwise I do like this cover. Uh, I like that he's, he's looking up, he's being illuminated by the truth, uh, so to speak. Yeah, I enjoy this cover, and I will put it in the B tier. Shenmue. A cover that I think looks nice until you realize that, like, two of these characters are, are basically not in the game. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. This doesn't really capture the essence of what Shenmue is, um, but uh, it's not a technically bad cover, so I'll put it in B tier. I mean, really, this cover should just be a forklift, because that really does represent the experience. But beyond that, it's it's okay. Character models, uh, I think they look pretty good, so we'll, we'll give it in B. Uh, Animal Crossing. This cover has so much stuff on it. Uh, or at least, I mean, it does have a lot of things, but like compared to the Arkham City one, this is a masterpiece. Um, I like this cover, it's cute. Um, I guess it doesn't really convey what the game is, because I don't think you would know what it is. You might think it's like SimCity or something. The, the weirdest thing about this cover is the choice of animals on the cover, because other than Blathers, these are all just random villagers. I not I'm, I don't know why they wouldn't have wanted to put more like people that you can guarantee everybody's going to see. Like why not put Tom Nook on here? But you know it is what it is. I'm sure they thought very hard about what animals to include. And of course, don't forget you get the memory card included. Very important. Uh, a pleasant enough cover that I will put in the B tier. I <laughs> don't know what that is. Carnage Rally. This is not real. I don't believe this is a genuine cover. But it's in here. And this folder does have the best covers of all time, so maybe I'm just not as big a game expert as I was hoping. Yeah, I think this goes in S. I'm happy for Ninja, I didn't know he got his own game. Good for him. He works really hard, and he's, uh, he's a genius. He's a uh, Da Vinci of the streaming era. <laughs> Next up we have Russell Grant's Astrology. Um, made by Deep Silver, who as we all know, uh, makes the, the greatest of games. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really one for astrology, personally, uh, despite being a Gemini myself. Uh, I I don't know who Russell Grant is, and I don't mean to, to uh, discount his credentials. I just don't feel like he's the one to make a, a DS game about astrology. Uh, still, though, this cover is completely good, and so I will put this in S tier. Uh, covers belong in S tier. Yeah, this cover and the last cover are some of my favorite covers here, so thanks to whoever sent these to me. And you know, wouldn't you look at that? We've hit the end of it. That That's all the covers we've got. So, uh, these are the best covers of all time, and even getting into D-Rank here is a huge accomplishment. I think that you should look at all these covers anytime you're doing some kind of uh, artwork, uh, whether it's graphic art or something else, uh, you will be inspired, because you'll see the majesty on display here and it will be a wonderful font of inspiration. 
Uh, so I hope we can learn a lot, and I hope that we can have covers in the future that look as good as these ones. Uh, what are your favorite covers? Uh, please let me know in the comments. And have a wonderful April 1st, everyone. See you around.